What is going on guys, they call me Epi. Welcome to another video on the channel today. Today's video, we are going to discuss more Ghost Recon information. In that 20 minute Ubisoft walkthrough gameplay of Ghost Recon, they revealed the skill trees. There are a couple of skill trees in Ghost Recon. We're gonna talk about what they showed on screen. I'm gonna link the official Ubisoft video in the description if you guys wanna check it out for yourselves. My official Ghost Recon YouTube playlist is in the description as well, and I'll put an annotation on screen at the end of the video if you guys wanna check it out there. There's a lot of interesting things here to talk about today, man. But before we start, I really just wanted to shut it down right now. I know a lot of division comparisons are going to come out of this video because we are talking about skills and character building and some progression here. And while Wildlands does have some RPG elements to it, it is not an RPG. It is an open world action adventure shooter first. Remember that. Keep that in mind. The developers have distinguished those two titles from one another. Think less number crunching and less emphasis on skills this time around and more emphasis on things like character perks. And while there is again some progression, you do level up in Ghost Recon. It's not going to be that heavily dependent on what you run to be successful. So the choice is there, there's just not a big emphasis on it this time around. So getting into the thick of things here today, I'm going to explain some of these trees as best I can while also speculating a bit because they didn't reveal exactly how some of these skills are unlocked, but we do have a lot of information available to us from this Ubisoft video. So overall, we have a total of six skill trees to work with, and to be fair, that's actually quite a lot. That was more than I thought we were going to get in this open world action adventure shooter, and each skill tree does have specific skill tiers that do actually stack a certain number of times to make that individual skill more powerful, all the way up to an elite skill. If we start off with the weapon skill line, stable aim looks okay, hip fire spread looks fine. Things get interesting when we look at ammo capacity as well as time to aim. These skills have more than one skill point put into each individual skill. They could stack up to a total of four skill points. I'm assuming that's what they're going to be called into each skill, making one more efficient than the tier before it. So that's cool. If you want to focus on one individual skill over unlocking another one, you can absolutely do that and the choice is yours. The same holds true for the drone skill line, which they actually did hover over some skills and some tooltips were given for each individual skill, as well as the requirements required to unlock some of these bad boys. So let's talk about those here for a second. The drone battery skill increases the autonomy of the drone itself. It requires one skill point and 2,500, I guess, green resources. You're going to see a couple of those uh, varied resources at the top. The resource required for this battery skill, this icon is actually called supplies, and they do say in the tooltip in the bottom right hand corner, side missions unlock these resources for your skills. But the interesting thing here is your current rank increases the battery life by 200%. The next rank will unlock infinite flight time for your drone. So again, skill tiers for each individual skills. You're going to have to put more time into each individual skill in order to make it the best possible version of itself that you could have as a ghost. The drone speed skill is pretty self-explanatory. It increases the speed and maneuverability of your drone. Requires three skill points and a thousand green currency. Similar to the previous tooltip, I'm assuming these resources are earned through side missions. The current rank, speed increased by 50%. The next rank, your speed is increased by 70%. So that's a 20% difference uh, in between each individual tier of this speed skill, but you'll notice that some skills in each skill tree do have this star icon in the bottom right hand corner of it, and it is actually explained here, adds an extra 80% speed bonus, and that's only available by completing a specific medal in a specific part of the map. So there are varied ways in which your skills can be leveled up between tiers, and also excess bonuses can be applied by actually playing the game. So it's more incentive to go out there and complete the world. However, map completion is going to work. We have yet to find that out as well, but that is awesome. More flexibility, more customization for your ghost. The drone zoom skill does exactly what you think it would do. It increases the maximum zoom of your drone, and the next rank does add five times zoom on top of that. Requires three skill points and 2,500 resources, which the tooltip does describe in the bottom right hand corner as unlocked through side operations. These resources are actually be giving names the further we go and dive deeper into the skill trees, so that's cool. The explosive drone skill is actually what they show off in the video itself. It's basically a C4 grenade version of the drone that can be used on the offensive. Requires three skill points, 1,500 green currency. The 1,500 resources required here are the same resources required for the battery skill upgrade, and again, these are supply mission exclusive. And if you haven't watched the official Ubisoft saw video in which this thing is actually displayed off, you should check it out because it's badass. The item skill tree correlates directly to anything you take with you to enhance your sufficiency in Bolivia. So frag grenades, flashbangs, I see C4s and mines, explosives, everything is here, diversion grenades. It's interesting to see parachute in here. I just thought that the ghost would have those by default when you're jumping out of chopper, so I would make sure that if you spawn into the game and you want to launch out of your chopper, abandoned ship, you have that equipped, otherwise things are going to head south really, really quickly. Since we don't already have access to the support skill tree, the physical
physical tree from everything that we have available right now looks like more support for your individual ghosts as opposed to team utility. So extra stamina, we have bullet resistance, air vehicle shields, explosive resistance, faster regen for the epic skill is pretty self-explanatory and that looks like a very powerful skill to have. The only question is how fast is that regen? How, how big of a bonus is that? It looks like it's going to be my skill tree of choice to be honest with you guys. And that's all we really got to see. The squad skill tree just like the rebel support skill tree wasn't displayed in this Ubisoft video so we can only speculate but that that's all the skills that we have in the game as of right now and again these things are subject to change because this isn't the final version of Ghost Recon but damn that looks pretty cool. Uh, there's a lot more skills than I thought there were going to be in this game. Please let me know what you guys think of the skill systems. Do you like these skills? Are they overpowered? Is there not enough skills? What do you think those rebel support and squad trees are going to be like? The hype is we're getting there man. We are really getting there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like comment and subscribe. As I said in the beginning of this video I have a playlist for Ghost Recon annotation is on screen. Check out the other videos. We're posting more Ghost Recon all of next week. I have been Abby. I will see you guys on the next video.